Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar event. My name is Joshua. I'm going to be your presenter today. It is promptly 12 noon Eastern time here. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we're here to talk about exporting accounting, exporting of data, or exporting financial data. Uh, before we get started on that, a couple of things. Again, we're going to be together for the next 20 minutes or so, maybe less, depending on the you know complexity of the topic. Um, I will promptly wrap things up at 12:20, no matter what where we are. 20 minutes into the you know into the event, uh, if you have questions, please type those into the questions portion of the webinar control panel. I'll do my best to keep an eye on those um, and see what I can't do to get those answered. Uh, folks, it's just me today, so um, I don't have anybody here answering questions for me. So I'll I'll repeat the question for everyone's benefit, and I'll see what I can't do to and get those answered. If you have, uh, please ask. I just ask that you do keep the questions topical, meaning on the exporting of the uh, church windows or the accounting data here under accounting data here that we're uh, uh, that we're our topic at hand essentially. Um, if you have other questions about something else, please contact support at 800-533-5227 or send us support questions to support at churchwindows.com. Um, and our techs will certainly be happy to answer that. Include your customer number if you know that, or at least your church name and address. Um, also, again, we are recording today's event. So as we do with all of our webinars, once we have this produced here in the next week or 10 days or so, we will put this out on our support center here. And it's taken a few seconds here to get to that. But once you get to our support center, the event will be here. You may already, there may already be an event on this same topic. You know, the same thing just done from a different earlier version. Frankly, this topic, folks, hasn't changed very much. Um, but in either case, this event will be out on this support center page at some point here, like I said, in the next week or 10 days. There's all kinds of information out there, okay? Um, please use that. It's the, the support center is just chock full of, of, of information. So, oh, and, and the, of course, this is all being taken from our A201 workbook today. Uh, you can get, find the workbooks on our website at our workbooks page. You can order those. We do try to keep those, you know, in conjunction, these events with our workbooks as much as possible. Kind of helps tie things all together for folks. Pages 28 to 32. Folks, there are lots of ways to export. You can export virtually every report from Church Windows Accounting, okay? We're not here to talk about exporting the reports. We're here to talk about actually exporting specific accounting data. Um, and how we find that is by going up to reports and export at the top and right here at the very top center let me get out my highlighter here right here the one labeled export okay that's what we're here to talk about that's what these four pages are here to discuss so when we click the down arrow once I get back to my regular drawing tool we do see the menu that offers three different options COA data accounts payable information or accounts receivable so COA data or chart of accounts data is literally just that. It's information about your chart of accounts. It doesn't represent transactions or, um, you know, anything that, you know, like under your transaction journal or your general ledger. It is literally just information about your accounts in your chart of accounts. Okay, balance information, uh, period activity totals or period balances. Um, but no specific transactions. It's just basically account number, account name, uh, you know, beginning balance, year to date, or period activity, month, January, February, what have you. Okay, so as we go through COA data, it opens up our export COA screen. It defaults to the current accounting year. However, I can do this for different accounting years, and the reason why this is important is because our chart of accounts may be different in different accounting years. So that's why it's not just one year. It's going to be any of your previous accounting years. We'll leave it as 2018. You can choose custom account groups. So if you're wanting chart of accounts data for just certain custom account groups, you certainly can do that. We're just going to look at the basic exporting COA data. And we simply click Export. 
and then it opens up our export window and we're here to talk about the export document not send via email but then when we click the down arrow here's where we have the three or four different options for how we can export this file so it defaults to Excel Excel SX CSV is the default or text file you know so we're not really here to talk much about the import function of that basically these you know this Excel or Excel SX is exclusive to Excel but CSV file and text file are generally considered you know universal file formats and can be imported virtually to any program so we're going to leave it as CSV comma separated value um, actually not we're going to go back and we're going to choose text or tab so we're going to choose tab text file separators tab click OK it then requires that we save it I've already got one in here that I am so it's overwriting that and it's asking me do I want to open this file now if your computer has a default program set for CSV files it will open in that commonly it might be something like Excel we don't have Excel here we have notepad so it's noticing here notice it's opening in notepad but basically it is exporting basically just the raw data in in this case tab separated columns so you know if we look steer our focus across the top of the page here let me get out my highlighter here our column is account type fund name account name account number account comments blah 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 okay so you know as we scroll down the list it populates that in some columns in some cases and not in others like particularly funds Assets aren't linked to funds, liabilities aren't, only when we go down to the funds, income, and expense accounts. So basically, this is just our raw chart of accounts data. Okay? Yes, there are more information columns, again, as we scroll across. As indicated, let me go up here to the very top. I'm doing that poorly. So clearly, see, we've got our column headers called, you know, beginning balance. Oh, that was weird. Yeah, beginning balance, January activity, February activity, March activity, etc. Okay, and we would just continue to go across the across the columns here, and more information is revealed. Okay, so that's again just basic chart of accounts information: account name, account number, fund, account. You know. Uh, period activity, beginning balance activity, comments in this case, account comments, what have you. Not terribly much to it. Okay. Next one is when we go to accounts payable. So accounts payable is going to be simply all of your vendors and payees that are listed under your accounts payable ledger account. So it does allow us to export information about a specific available vendor. Okay. So I can add multiple vendors to the list. Um, in this case it just adds them notice here I can go down the list and add select vendors if I wish okay or I can clear the selection and I can do export all again notice here no columns or anything on the information here it's basically just exporting all of the information that we have entered about each vendor so once we click export all again it opens up a similar option this time it does give us all of our traditional export options in addition to Excel or XLSX CSV or text file it does bring in things like HTML PDF file what have you so same thing I can go down here and go okay I want to import this into as a text file or a CSV file requires again that I save it again it's the same file name so it's going to allow me to overwrite it I can choose where I want to save it when I open it. Again, it's the basic raw information that I have about each one of my vendors spread out across the screen horizontally. Okay, so right here I've got my payee name, address one, address two, city, state, zip, etc. across the screen. That once I scroll over, it'll bring in all of the vendor payee tab information um, tax ID the date established if I have that expired uh, assigned expense account number okay basically 
all of the information here. Let me show you where it's gathering that information from. Here under Manage Accounts, under our liabilities, and it's true for any liability, but basically any of my vendors, right over here, the tab called Vendor Slash Payee, right here, Vendor Plat Payee. So whatever information is entered under this Vendor Payee tab, that's what it's exporting. Okay. Similarly, when we're talking about accounts payable or accounts receivable, excuse me, a ledger asset again with different client accounts, again a client tab with name, address, city, state, phone number, information, email, tax ID, you know, default income account, what have you. When we go up to reports, export, and choose accounts receivable, I know some of you don't have that, but same thing, I can choose specific client information or export all. Again, exporting it in any variety of file formats. Actually, let's try, yeah, let's do CSV instead. And again, now, folks, this is a comma-separated file, so this isn't, each one of the fields is separated by a comma. So that tells us that certain information in, in this, this particular, for some of these clients, is not populated. Okay, so I don't have address information for folks here, like John and Amy Wilson. I have, you know, 123 Anywhere Street in Columbus. Okay, um, if I did have information, it would put address, address one, put it in there, then separate it by a comma, then put in address two, comma, city, state, comma, etc. Okay, let's try doing it as a text file instead and you'll see it does look a little different. Yeah. So, you know, just a matter of how are the fields separated by a comma, spacing between those two, separating those fields or is it a tab? Tab is a lot sometimes frequently easier to understand or, or to comprehend than, than comma. But that's it folks, you can import any one of these files into a variety of programs, Excel or Excel, you know, Excel or Word or Notepad or WordPad or, you know, Publisher, any program that you want to import it into that permits the import of a text file or CSV or Excel file, you can export this, you know, chart of accounts information. But that's our topic. Um, not too terribly difficult. Again, Accounting A201 Workbook, pages 28 to 32, that's what's covered here. Um, Let's see if you've got any folks. I don't have see any questions coming in. If you have questions, please type those in there for me. Um, we hope this information has been helpful for you. A lot of folks are unaware of this export, you know, exporting of just basic chart of accounts information. You know, yeah, of course, you know, you go to something like reports and go to, you know, balance sheet. You know, balance sheet has an export option, but that's a report. That's not necessarily information about your actual just chart of accounts. Question being asked is, is there a way to choose which columns you want to export? Yeah, that's a great question. Unfortunately, no. Yeah, none of these windows have columns tabs or fields tabs on there. So yeah, it just, it's a default setting on that, Cynthia, and it exports the information that's in the system. Yeah, all of it. Good question. Unfortunately, no, it is, it's, it's, it, those are set. So yeah, thank you folks very much for attending here today. We hope the events are proving helpful. Um, again, this will be out on our website um, in the next week or 10 days. Uh, the date ranges are set as well. So yeah, again, here under, uh, as we were pointing out before, like under our COA data, it's whatever accounting year you choose here, since the chart of accounts can be different from year to year. But under our export accounts receivable, it's based on whatever year you're in. So in this case, when I go to accounts payable or accounts receivable, it's based on me being in our year of January through December 2018. Okay. 
That's a good question. Same with accounts receivable as well. So yeah, in, in two of them, it's based on the period that we're sitting in. So if I wanted to export my accounts payable data for, say, 2017, I would actually have to go up to special functions, manage years, and change back to 2017, then export it. Good question. Change my year back. All right. Well, we certainly do appreciate your attending the events, folks. Again, we're going to wrap things up a little bit early here today. Um, give you a chance to go out and grab some coffee or something. Um, please let us know if, again if you have questions. You know, we've got our current list of remaining September events out on the website. We're going to be getting the October events out here very soon if they're not already there. And uh, we hope to see everybody at a future Church Windows uh, webinar event. All right, I'll go ahead and end the event for everyone. And uh, thank you so much. Hope everybody has a great day. All right, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.